Discovering Kazakhstan is Dennis Keen's biased view on culture and the modern life of Kazakh people. Amazing landscapes and architectural masterpieces all over Kazakhstan. Salam etsizbe, zdrasvite, and hello. This is Discovering Kazakhstan, and I'm Dennis Keen. If you look at old maps of Verdant Almaty, the largest city in Kazakhstan, you'll see some old names that are no longer around. And one of them is Dungan Street. The street is named after the Dungan people, one of the many nationalities that you can find here in Kazakhstan. The Dungans are a Muslim people originally from China, where they're called Huizhu. And they fled to the Russian Empire in 1877 after a crushed rebellion. Many of them settled here in Almaty, and it was in this Dungan neighborhood that one of the future leaders of the Dungan people was born. His name was Magaza Masanshi. Masanshi helped lead the Dungan Calvary, and he even opened up a Dungan school here in Almaty. If you look at the new maps of the city, you'll see that Dungan Street is now named in his honor, Masanshi Street. Three hours from Almaty, a village has also been named in Masanshi's honor. And it's in this village and other neighboring villages like Surtube and Bulanbatar that many of Kazakhstan's 50,000 Dungans live today. They're known for faithfully preserving their traditions, and especially their old-fashioned weddings. And luckily for us, a kind young couple has invited us to help participate in celebrating their matrimony. But now, if we're going to make it to their wedding, we better hit the road. Anybody who's gone from Almaty to Bishkek knows this beautiful drive well, though the wedding weekend turned out to be somewhat wet. Luckily, this wasn't any kind of bad omen. It's a fact of life, because most Dungan weddings are held during a certain season, from autumn to spring, when this part of Kazakhstan can get quite rainy. In the summer, many Dungans are out in the fields, so this is our last chance to catch this special celebration. After a short three-hour drive from Almaty, we've arrived in the Dungan heartland of Kazakhstan. It was here in 1877 that Dungan refugees arrived after a long journey from China, and they settled along the Chui River. If we cross the river just over this way, you're already in Kyrgyzstan. We're heading down the road, to the hometown of our groom, Bulan Batar. When you go through a Dungan village, you know right away, because farmers have turned every spare plot of land into fertile fields of vegetables. It's tempting to go pick the fresh produce, but we had an appointment to make. We've finally arrived at the home of the lucky guy himself, the groom, and I'm really excited to meet him. Hey, he's smart. Hello, Dennis. So, Welcome to the country. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, I understand that Ismar has a special task for me, so I'm going to go see just exactly what he has in store. It seems I've been recruited into the groom's entourage. We're off to fetch the dowry from the bride's house. The dowry can be quite large, all sorts of kitchen appliances, silverware, things for the new home. So I'm here to lend a helping hand. As the hired hand today, I'm here to help the groom's friends move the dowry over to the bride's house. Before we do any heavy lifting, we have to get some food in our bellies. We'll be treated here to some noodles, salads, tea, whatever can make us feel energetic for the task at hand. While we men have been grunting and lifting and moving the dowry to Ismar's place, Gania the bride has been getting dressed up in her wedding finest. Gania is dressed up in her ceremonial robe. You're wearing this for tomorrow. Yes. So, for the wedding tomorrow, she'll be wearing this elaborate Dungan wedding costume. From the top, she has this am amazing bun that this style has been preserved from the Qing dynasty in the 19th century. She has this beautiful uh, embroidered uh, necklace with all sorts of gemstones inside, pink and green tassels, and from the bottom, she even has some bells. When she walks, you can hear it. When you look at her, you can see just how beautiful she is. In an important stage of the wedding, a veil is placed on Gania's head to shield her during her journey to her matrimonial home. Little kids are everywhere to encourage a fertile future for the young bride. 
Orchestrating the festivities is an important figure, the matchmaker. One of the most important roles in the wedding is played by Rosa, the matchmaker. They explain that she's not just a matchmaker, but something like a diplomat between the two families. And here for her services, she's being treated to a lovely feast. The wedding menu at a Dungan ceremony is a veritable smorgasbord with dozens of small dishes called shi, steamed buns, egg custard, sticky rice, and more. The dishes are put out in rows of three, and in olden times could number up to 108. Most of the dowry, of course, is from the bride side, but one special gift is from the groom side. It's this golden jewelry. I'm doing what I can to help out carrying just one piece of the dowry, but there's so much here. There's shampoo, there is soap, there are dishes, there is jewelry, there are clothes. Whatever you can think of that a newlywed couple needs, it's here. You could not imagine how many teapots one newlywed couple needs. But look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They say just in case in the future they throw some kind of big parties, they need to make that much tea. So we have all sorts of teapots. Here we have small little teacups called piala, and the Central Asian chest, which they call sunduk, made out of aluminum with all sorts of beautiful decoration on the side. All of this is included in the dowry that comes from the bride. For the final shipment, we're loading refrigerators and washing machines, all sorts of kitchen appliances. So we needed something a little bit bigger than just a small Russian car. We've got this big truck to load up. Dungans, it seems, love a good feast, and it takes a long time to cook some of these Dungan dishes. This one is called Wutse. It's a kind of dish made with vegetables and tripe, and they've just started cutting up the vegetables here. They're gonna wake up at four in the morning just to make sure that this dish is ready by seven for breakfast. At the bride's house, Gania's friends have gathered to say farewell as she sets off on her long journey over to the groom's, which is two blocks away. As a man, I'm not exactly invited to the bachelorette party, but we can take a peek and see what happens. We moving men have done our job and the dowry is now in its final resting place at the groom's home. We can see what we've carried over here from the brides, a beautiful lace traditionally made by Dungan people a aluminum chest, an entire closet full of brand new clothes, some thin mattresses to put on the floor when hosting guests, and even some furniture. Basically, everything that a groom and a bride might need to start their wedded life together. As the first day's wedding ceremonies were mostly wrapped up, we decided to go for a walk and see where our wedding couple spent their school days. So it turns out that Ghania, our Dungan bride, is actually a dancer. And some members of her ensemble today are doing a little example for us of Dungan dance. The dance was amazing, but now it's time to get some rest because this was just the first day. Tomorrow, there's even more in store for us. 
at both the brides and the groom's home, everybody has gotten up early this morning for the special tripe breakfast. Neighbors are gathering from all around to give it a try. We're gonna go have a taste ourselves. All morning, the ingredients have been diced and assembled and stewed, and I was excited to see how it tasted. Lingan men and their school caps have collected out here in the morning cold to have the special wedding breakfast, wuzi, which is made from radish and tripe from beef. Though you notice that the staff here is entirely young men. That's because all the ladies are inside having their own breakfast. Americans don't eat, usually eat that much tripe, but actually I find that wuzi is really tasty. They offered me some seconds, but actually I'm gonna hold off for now because I know for lunch we have flow. I need to save some space in my belly. The wutze was time-consuming and filling enough, but that was just the beginning. Meat and carrots were stewed with rice to make the classic Central Asian dish plof, and men from both families hovered over cauldrons all day to make enough to feed the whole neighborhood. The bride's hairdo, meanwhile, also needed some serious preparation. With the generous globs of hair gel, it's molded so it looks like a black crow, a sign of the arrival of adulthood. Bright threads are woven through her hair to bring a bright future, and the entire bun is sewn into a thick mat in the hope that her future family will be just as tight-knit. With the feast prepared and the bride's hair fully formed, the man side set off to pick up Ganya. As a fully embedded groomsman, I'm here with the gang to come collect the bride. Before we do, we have a lot of introductions to, to make if we're going to win the family's favor. When Ismar first arrives, he goes to greet his bride's family and get the blessing of the local mullah. Having shown the proper respects, he's given permission to transport the bride to his home, though he still mustn't see her. Instead, Ghani's uncle carries her out of the home into a specially decorated car. It may seem like some kind of unusual ritual, but this is actually how we give our blessing to the groom. We knock him right on the head. The groom now has to make sure that this is exactly his bride. He's using a telescope, he's using a binocular, he's using whatever kind of invisible tools he has at his disposal. It's one of many games that the Dungans play when their bride first arrive. To be honest, I have no idea what's going on, but there's all sorts of games and tricks that are being played. <laughs> Different groomsmen are whacking other groomsmen. Let's try to keep up with the action. The bride now can walk on her own from the car into her home, but you notice that she is still veiled. The groom should still not be able to see her face. In one of the final steps, the bride's Qing era dynasty bun is decorated with all sorts of beads, flowers, decorations, and it's done here, especially in the kitchen, because as a future housewife, this will be her lair. Now that this elaborate procession is complete, the bride is enthroned in her new home where she bows to her newly acquired relatives. She looks purposefully solemn to show respect to the family she's left behind. But she's clearly proud of these ancient traditions. She and her new husband have carried on. For me, it's been a fascinating experience seeing my first Dungan wedding. I know that the food and the fun is something that I will never forget. I'm Dennis Keane, and this has been Discovering Kazakhstan. I hope you'll join us next time.